In this video, we'll be training and interpreting machine learning models. We'll start with a linear regression, which gives us a very basic baseline model to be working with. Then we'll try and improve upon it by using gradient-boosted trees. Finally, we'll both be evaluating and interpreting our models, as well as saving the results. Let's start with a linear regression model. Linear regression models are both highly studied and highly interpretable, so we can get a good sense of what's going on within our data. So first, we're going to be working with this linear regression model. So from pyspark.ml.regression, we're going to import linear regression. Now we're going to create this LR object, and that's going to be a linear regression model. We have our label column, which is log price, and our feature column, which is simply features. Next, we're going to add it to the featureization pipeline that we made in previous videos. Here, we're just going to set the stages of our pipeline to be our previous pipeline, plus this new linear regression model. Finally, we're going to train this model by call calling dot fit on this new pipeline. This might take a few moments to train, depending on the size of your cluster. Now, if we want to know a little bit more about what linear regression is doing here, we can call this dot explain params method. This allows us to see all of the different hyperparameters that we can access using Spark. This is really helpful when it comes to hyperparameter tuning later on. Now, if we want to get a sense of how our linear regression model is working, let's call the last stage from our pipeline and use this dot summary attribute. Now, if I take this LR summary object, let's take a look at the R squared value. R squared is just a way of measuring the variance explained by our model. And we see about a dot 68. So our model is performing OK, let's say. Now let's take a look at our different coefficients. Each one of these different coefficients will match back up with one of the columns in our data set. Finally, we can look at the p-values as well. P-values are just a way of quantifying the statistical significance of the relation that we're seeing. And so here, the lower the p-value, the better. And we can see that some of these values are relatively high, so we might want to leave these out of our analysis. And some of them are pretty low, meaning they're going to contribute a lot of information as we train this model. Now let's try a different model. In this case, let's try gradient-boosted trees. Linear regression is highly interpretable, but it's generally an underperforming model. Gradient-boosted trees is a little bit less interpretable, but generally, boosted trees are a little bit more performant than linear regression. So here, just like in the previous step, I'm going to use this GBT regressor. I'm going to set the label column and the features column, and I'm going to add this to my original pipeline. Now, by calling this dot fit method, it's going to start to train this model. This is going to take a little bit longer than the linear regression model, and there's a number of reasons for that. Gradient boosted trees are not a fully parallelizable algorithm. And because of that, sometimes it takes a little bit longer to train. Now, let's take a look at how this is working. We can pull the last stage from our pipeline and call this dot feature importances attribute. This allows us to see how each of our different features contributes to our final model. Now, in order to compare our two different algorithms and how they're performing, let's use this regression evaluator. I'm going to import that from pyspark.ml.evaluation, and I'm going to call this .explainparams method again. This allows us to see what our regression evaluator is actually doing. And so by default, we're going to be using root mean squared error to evaluate our different regression algorithms. Here, let's go ahead and set our label column and our prediction column. Now let's take a look at how our gradient boosted tree model is performing. If we evaluate on our unseen test data frame, we can see that we reduced our root mean squared error by about 0.02. So that's not too bad, but it could probably use a little bit more massaging as well. Now let's go ahead and save our model and our predictions. So here, I'm just going to create this object predictions df. That's going to be transforming test df by using our gradient boosted tree model. Then I'm going to go ahead and call dot write dot parquet on that data frame. And that's going to allow us to save our data frame, in this case, back to a blob store. Finally, we can save the train pipeline as well. This allows us to use the full pipeline in future instances. In here, I just have this wrapped in a try accept clause in case that model is already written to our file system. Now, there are a few different options if we want to put this model into production. First, we can just save our predictions to some sort of database or put it behind a REST API. That's the simplest solution. We could also use our model to predict on a live stream of incoming data. That works very well with Spark streaming. 
And finally, we can export our model in a number of different formats. The most common one that we normally see is the open source framework Emily. To take this further, you can do some hyperparameter tuning by using Spark's cross evaluator. Additionally, you can look at a number of different other models that are available within Spark. And finally, you can check out other courses at databricksacademy.com.